cool. Show them. All right, so there you go. Excellent. Everybody wave. Woohoo! Ooh, ooh. All right, so in your notes, week 15 for you. For the online students, it's week 16. Very nice. Okay, so I have a couple things I want to cover about class work. Um, but before I do that, almost, give me right here. There you go. There you go. We have, we have somebody new around the board today. He's trainable. We know him. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey now. I have a quiz for you. Ready? End of semester quiz. Very nice. That's very nice. Okay? First question. Let's see if you know the answer. Why is December 9th an important date for us? That allows day to submit your final and late work. Oh, right? So your final, which by the way, is your final available? Yes. 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 Where is it located? No, not my IT. Oh, no, it's, uh, Blackboard. Blackboard, very nice, right? Blackboard. So, how many chapters? All of them, one through nine. Okay. Now, is there anything else on that day? So that's the uh, last day to submit. What? Say it again. So give me your answer again. Your so final exam and late work. Yeah. So it's also the last day to ask me to late grade. What? Anything, anything. You got my other long shot? There you go. He was looking for it, weren't you? Does that make sense? It does. It does? Not really. Who? Not really? Nope. Do you know what, how wait, late work works? <laughs> you're late. You're late, yeah, but can you submit work after the due date? Are you, are you joking me or you're not, you're really serious? Because can you ask me for a late grade right now? Yeah, if you. Well, I'm saying if it's. Go ahead. Say it louder. I'm saying because what if something. Um, if something happens after that date, this is why I'm telling you this right. date. Is that what you mean? Yeah. This, that's why I'm communicating very clearly, I hope, why the importance of this date. Because after this date at midnight, which by the way really is the next morning when I get up and grade, okay? But after that, you can't ask me to late grade anything. So that's why I'm communicating the importance. Did you see the important date for us? Right? Okay. Next question. Very good. Why is December 10th an important date for us? Good. In a sense, we're done, yeah. But there's another big deal about the 10th. Anybody remember? Okay, final grades in a sense. I actually gave this date a, a, a title. Review day. Remember? That's right. This is your day. You're 24 hours to review your grade and ask me any questions about it. But what's important about that date? It's, you can't work on anything. After the 9th, the morning of, after I grade everything, you can't work on anything in the 10th. The 10th is just a review day. Okay? Okay? Okay. And then what happens, I didn't ask this, but what happens in, on the 11th in the morning? I post grades in the end of WebAdvisor. Do you guys get to see them immediately? No. No, you don't. You, they take a couple weeks. So, therefore, my next question. Actually, no, this is a different one. Do we have a final exam for my IT lab? Yes. No. 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 Yeah, the prep school. Yeah, that's for it. PowerPoint. Do we call it a final? No. 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 So there, a final exam is something that covers the, all the material in a particular topic. So we've had three practical exams over Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, but there's not a final for my IT lab. And that's why I'm saying it, because somebody's going to ask me. <laughs> So I'll probably have to say it again, but that's okay. Now, the other thing I want to say here is that if you didn't get the Word or the Excel one done, and by the way, which when was the other one due? The PowerPoint. Uh, Monday. Monday, yesterday. Yeah, last night. I graded this morning early. Somebody tried to get underneath my due date, and they submitted right after I graded. Was it late? Yes. Yes, because I'm going to be more strict. I'm more strict now about this, okay? 
So here's what I want you to know. If you're working on those practicals after you've done the training, it's going to be harder because you're going to have forgotten some of the things that it trained you on, and you may have to go back and review, okay? So account for that. So even if you have some late points, no late items, no points removed, know that you're going to be a little more challenged to complete some of those practicals if you're waiting, okay? That's why you do the exam. Very nice, very nice, okay? Now, last question. When is the grade in Blackboard your final grade in this class? When is the grade in Blackboard? The morning of the 11th. Good, the morning of the 11th. That's one way to look at it. Is there another answer that I gave you last week for this? Oh, um, the Excel uh, my grade thing we did. For okay, so actually, that's actually just a tool. Very good that you're thinking about that because we're going to have that come back in week 17, the my grade spreadsheet thing. I want to make sure suddenly I had a thought that I, how good I am on audio wise. Mm -hmm. But the final grade in Blackboard that is represents your grade is when everything's graded. Now that could be the 11th, but could it be before the 11th? No. Yeah. Yeah. If you're done. Exactly. Oh, if you've nice. done early, if you're done early, which I recommend, right? Know what this is. Don't wait until, because I, if you have something and you're like, hey, I want to know what my final grade is, I'm going to say, hey, go look at your my grade spreadsheet. And you're like, no, let's just, can you, I would grade anything remaining. Okay? How many of you got 100% on that quiz? How many of you got 50%? The one I just had you take right here. How many of you understood all of that? Okay. These are important things. That's therefore the importance part. Okay. Okay. Now, how how what's the last? And I don't ask this, but it kind of is inherent, so I want to ask it. When's the last time you can use those late grade no points removed? December ninth. That's right, December 9th. Not December tenth. December 9th. If you send me a request that says, "Oh, I had a late grade no points removed," and then no 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 no, I'm going to say what? Too bad. Wah, wah. I know it's rude, but I will, right? I will because I've told you. And I like to plan that final week out to where everyone's clear. Okay? Are we good? Okay. What do you, okay, final question. What do you have to have to pass this class? A C, very good, 70%. Let's say you're at 69.99. Yeah, you should know that way before the ninth. And so that you could, could you do something to help that? I think so. Absolutely. And I'm going to tell you a little secret. I'm going to tell you a little secret that some have figured out, so I'm going to just tell everybody. On the quizzes, on the chapter quizzes, when you do a late grade, I don't take points off. Oh, so that's why. That's why. Anybody get that? No. So when you don't complete a chapter quiz, I do put a zero in there. But once you complete it, you do have to ask me to clear that zero, but that score is not diminished in any way. You know why? Because it's hard to do in Blackboard, and I can't really do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I, I just have to admit I've been lying to you this whole time. Okay? But it's good to know now because if you have some low scores, right? Right, but if you were looking at what's the biggest impact on my grade, what are those things you'd want to start with? My IT lab. My IT lab, practicals first, the items, and then the hands-on, and then the chapter stuff. That's the order I would go in because that's if you look at syllabus, right? Okay, are we good? Yeah. All right, so in your notes, this is our topic for today. I know, right? We're finally in the topic for the day, creating websites. <laughs> How many of you have ever wanted to create a website? Let's show them. Let's show them. How many of you ever want to create a website? Hey, by the way, you're going to get to this weekend hands-on, okay? Um, it's an actually really fun experience, but here's the key with this assignment is that you need to have a Google account. And I warned this at the beginning of the semester, but I'm kind of curious, and I know I'm having you flip back and forth, but how many of you already have a Gmail account? Okay, keep your hand up. Of all those that have a Gmail account, how many have an Android phone? Okay, so actually it's normally the reason people have a Gmail account is they have an Android phone. But what's the other reasons to have a Gmail account? Easy, just play Google. 
good, it is easy. And it's how you get access to Google Docs, which, by the way, is very awesome. Okay, If you haven't been using Google Docs, I highly recommend. I'm actually thinking about including an assignment next year. Okay, so that assignment, I'm not going to talk about that. I'll talk about that on Thursday with you all. But let's talk about this concept of how to create websites. And, and let me say, tell you that uh, the, the reason they hired me here was because of my experience in this topic. So I'm going to really try to tone it down because I could get crazy technical and I don't want to... Then I want to scare you off, okay? But this is what my speci speciality is, is right here, okay? So there's really three major steps. And I talked about the last one already. Anybody remember talking about domains? Yeah. Yeah, so what is a domain? It's like .com, uh, .org, .gov. Very nice, yeah. So it is like that, right? So... If I go to, let me just drop out here real quick, and I go to Fresno City College dot edu, sorry, I do know how to spell it, what part of that is the domain? EDU. No, very nice. Actually, the edu is called a top-level domain. It's still a domain-like, but it's really the first part right here, okay? And we talked about, can anybody get a dot edu? Yeah, no, can anybody get a .mil, which, by the way, what does that stand for? Military. Got .gov? Yeah. No, you have to be in the government. .com? Yeah, anybody, right? And it's actually kind of interesting to, to do a, a, a query. You guys know what a query is? A question you ask. When you, when you do a Google search, you're actually doing a query. A query against their database. That's what you're doing. But it's kind of fun to actually figure out if your name's taken. Mine isn't because I have it. But it's kind of interesting, right? These days, the whole domain thing is kind of changing. But still, from this perspective, step one is to get a domain, OK? Step two is to get hosting. So in this case, when we talk about hosting, here's what this means, OK? You're actually going to buy some space out on the internet on a server. And that space will most likely cost you some money, although it could be free. As an example, in the Google Sites that you're going to create for Thursday night's assignment, they're actually, you're going to come up with part of the domain, but they're going to have part of it that they, they make you use their domains. But they're going to give you free hosting. Now, do you think if you're a business, you would use Google Sites for, for doing a website? You absolutely could. Would there be any downside to doing that? Branding. Branding. Because if it's going to say sites.google.com when they first search for it, they want to see your name. They want to see Ford.com. They want to see something like that to brand the idea. So, yeah, most businesses might not, but if you're a small business and you just need to get a quick website out there, that's a great way to do it. But most companies that really are doing a significant web presence are going to buy some hosting. This is actually something I did for a couple of years. I ran a hosting company here in town. Sold services to co uh, organizations, built websites for them and stuff like that. Which leads to the next thing. So once you get hosting, then you actually build the website. Anybody know any terms associated with building a website? Like what do you use? How do you do it? Anybody? Codes? Who said codes? Yeah, codes. You know any kind of codes you use? HTML codes. And I think I showed this the other day. But if you're ever at a website, I'm at twitter.com, and I'm going to in Google, and I do inspect, all this stuff right here on the bottom, that's all the code that makes that website appear. Now, by the way, I blew it up so you, it's hard to see, but there's a lot. Like, look at all the code to get just the Twitter homepage, okay? So if you're building websites, what you're doing is you're writing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is generally the three things. So let's just, HTML, have you heard of that? Yeah. Anybody know what it stands for? Hypertech markup language, HTML. You don't have to know that, just in your notes, put HTML. So HTML is the structure of the web, the web page, the, the structure of the information. Okay, the structure of how we're going to lay things out. Then CSS makes things nice and makes it beautiful. So CSS is kind of like the clothes that you put on. So the HTML is your structure, your bones. 
The CSS is like the clothes that you put on to make your bones look good. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then JavaScript is actually the thing that makes it do something, right? So if you're running, right, I think of you being active. If a website is doing something, that's most likely JavaScript, although it could be a lot of other things. Now, because in the world that we live in, there's such a difference between websites. So let's just think for a minute. Fresno City College over here, right? What do you like about Fresno City College website? Anything in particular? Anything you like about it? You, you like the way it's organized? Okay, I don't, but that's good that you do because really, <laughs> but that's okay. I, as a web professional, I don't. I think it's just too hard to find things. Yeah. Blackboard okay, up. Blackboard could be different. We can yeah. talk about that. Elvis. It's too up. Yeah, I think it is a little too cluttered. But here's the deal. We've trained you, and, and I'm guessing that's why you said this. We've trained you on this website because we haven't changed it much, have we? Mm -hmm. Have you noticed it changed much over the last couple of years if you've been around? Nah. This is what we call pretty much a static site. We just hired somebody to, to actually redesign this thing, which I'm really happy about. And they actually was one of our students that actually was in our program, got hired to do it. I'm very excited about this. Now, contrast that with something like Twitter, right? So does Twitter change all the time? Yes. What, what, how does tr Twitter change? What is Twitter? It's a social media. Good. It's a social networking, social media. So when you go out and you want to write a tweet... Is there, there's a limit for how many characters you can use, like 141, I think, characters. 140? Yeah. 140? I don't know why I got 141. Thank you for knowing that, Leah. Good for you. <laughs> so people can tweet all over the place, right? And you can see anybody's information. So it's constantly changing. So the technology that this is built on is very different than the technology that Fresno City College's website is built on. Does that make sense? But they're both websites. But Twitter and Facebook are more like web apps. So in your notes, put web apps. So websites typically don't change, but web apps change all the time. And they allow you to interact with them in a way that goes beyond just reading information. Okay? So this is a really interesting area right now really fun to be in because there's so much happening because people are developing like here's the I mean everybody's heard of apps right right so when you're developing stuff let me come back over here when you're when somebody is a developer and wants to develop an app they have to think about what kind of device am I going to develop for what are the two major types of devices or operating systems where we have today Android and iOS, Android and iOS. very good so if I'm going to do an app like, let's say, hmm, one you would know, Angry Birds, right? Which of these would I target to write that for? Android. How come Android? Very interesting answer. One I probably wouldn't disagree with, but why would you target Android here? Because it's better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're a little biased, right? You're biased towards that thing that you use, right? It's probably true you use Android. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. How many use iPhone? Yeah, you'd probably answer iPhone, right? Because people have very... Adrian, I'm going to look at him. We, we, we had this conversation. People have very strong opinions about their phone, right? But let's think about this. If I'm going to develop a game, why wouldn't I develop a game that just works on the web and it doesn't matter what kind of phone it is? Think about that for a minute. Why Yeah. Why would you? Why not think about developing it on a web, as a web app? And then no matter who, device or what, it can be used. Does that make sense? So that's why... Oh, go ahead. Don't they have different like, uh, requirements? For example, Android has uh, uh, wider, like, wider, wider, like, more apps than Apple because Apple has like, very strict rules. It's true. That's true. That's true. When you, if you're an iOS developer, okay, and that's what we call them, if you're developing for the iOS platform, if you're a programmer, then to get your app out on the I, uh, what is it, Apple Store, you have to jump through many more hoops. Because Apple wants to make sure when that user downloads that app, they have a good experience. Android, they're not as picky. 
Now, it used to be true that there were more iPhone apps than there was Android apps, but now there's more Android apps than iPhone apps, partly because of this and partly because of the number of people that are using these devices. Android worldwide is hick, kick, and butt. Okay? And why is that? You might know why is that? They're cheaper. They're cheaper. And if they're going to go inter internationally, they have to be a lower. Matter of fact, they have right now called Android One, and it's being tested outside of the U.S., and it's a $100 smartphone. How many of us would buy a smartphone that does 100 bucks and it does pretty much everything you have, right? I mean, I'm looking at buying a new I uh, Android phone for Christmas, Ooh. right? And it's expensive, but it's one of those nice big phones. I mean, now they're phablets. Have you guys heard this? <laughs> Fat phones, tap phablets. <laughs> It's crazy how big they are, okay? But back to this. So let me, anybody restate the point I'm trying to make about this? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Why not just put it online? Why not just do a web app? Because by the way, that's what Angry Birds did. Do you know you can play Angry Birds on the browser? Yeah. That's why Angry Birds did it. I was actually around in the development world and talked to some of the developers who did it. And they were like, yeah, why not go to the web? Because Everyone can play there, no matter what device you're on. But, okay, that assumes you have good internet, right? Because does your internet speed vary when you're on a mobile phone? Yeah. Holy Mac! And especially if you're depending on it for, like, GPS, then it's crazy. <laughs> okay? All right. So my point about this, and let's just go back to my simple chart, right? Creating websites is one thing, but these days we can create beyond websites, we can create web apps. And we can create one app that we'll do across both platforms. So in technology speaking, this is a big deal happening right now. There's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of things we're going to be able to do in the next couple of years. So let me just do a shameless plug. Next semester, there's a class called CIT 85, Creating Websites. I'm co-teaching it with another member of the department. And it's going to be face to face. It's not going to be online because I just I'm teaching one advanced right now, but not 85, a different one. But this one is going to be face to face. So I just want to plug that for any of you that are interested, in, because is this some, even if you're not going to be a developer, is this kind of stuff going to affect you? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. No matter what profession you're in, generally, okay. But you guys, have, I'm curious about something. How many of you know what the SCP is? Are you guys all required to have an SCP now? Mm -hmm. What is an SCP? It's your plan for what you're yeah. going to take. Does that res kind of restrict the number of uh, different classes you can take outside of your plan? Yeah. It, it, and I think, that kind of, I, I think there's two sides to the SCP, which means classes like this you might be interested in or harder to take if they're not on your plan. And the one thing that was great for me when I was in your position how I figured out how I wanted to do what I was going to do is I just took different classes. And in taking different classes, I went, wow, that's what I want to do. And I think that SEP is kind of hard because I understand. Because have you seen people that have been here for 10 years? Yeah. <laughs> right? Don't raise your hand. I, 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 well, well but, but, and it, took, it takes longer. Yeah. It takes longer, especially if you're meandering. Right? And the state's like, hey, you guys got to get people through. So I think there's two sides to that coin, and I think classes, that's why I'm bringing up is classes like this that I think would be kind of fun to take. If you're interested, you know, it makes it harder to take it. So here's what I want to do, though. I want to keep this real, okay? Because when we talk about websites and we talk about you have to have hosting and you have to do all that, I really actually want to tell you and describe to you how it works and show you. Because telling you is one thing, showing you is a whole other thing. Okay, so if you remember from our discussion, then let's just, I'm actually going to switch browsers. Which browser am I in right now? My least favorite browser. Anybody know why Internet Explorer is my least favorite browser? It is slow. That's actually not the only reason it's my least favorite browser. Yeah, it's security is really bad, and I'm about to show you why. But let's just start with here. If I go to, let's say, Facebook.com, what's about to happen? And you should know part of the answer here based on my past lectures. What's about to happen when I hit enter? Facebook.com. 
goes through, it's going to go to that. You have to push that thing that allows you to the security thing. What oh, that okay. All right. Actually, that's good. You're actually talking about in this case how when you go to Facebook, you have to have a be in a secured site. Is that yeah. what you're talking about? Yeah, is that not it? That's close. But do you remember me talking about DNS last time? Because does the internet understand Facebook.com? No, it only understands IP addresses. So the first thing that it has to do, and I'm, I'm just going to show it to you. I'm going to go to the command line. I'm going to type ping facebook.com. And ping is going to give me the IP address. So it's 172, do you guys see it? 252.126. You got it? So here's the deal. I can actually go to that. So that's the first thing I want to tell you. 172.252. Anybody remember it? Uh-oh, let's do it. 172. Two five two. What was the rest of it? I have to go look again. Short term memory loss. Two five two one two zero dot six. So if I go to that website or that IP, guess what comes up? Facebook. Because the internet doesn't understand what. The internet doesn't really understand domain names. The internet only understands a numbering system called IPs. Okay. So that's the first thing, is it has to find the IP address, and then it has to go to that server, and that server says, okay, here's all the things you need. So look at this page. When you're, and here's the deal, people think when you're browsing, and we even call it browsing the internet, you think you're looking at something out there, right? You're not. You're actually looking at something on your local computer now. Because once you did that entire process of hitting return, finding that IP, that browser went out to that website, brought all the resources it needed back to you, and then showed them to you here. Oh, what happened? Did I have the right? Let me see if I got the wrong, wrong number. Let me see if I got wrong. Because I tried this earlier and it worked. Oh, oh, yeah. Very nice. It's one seven. I did it as a purpose to show you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I actually need to type that actual little in, control C, control V. See? Right? So it actually, so I proved that it actually is true that the internet doesn't understand Facebook or Ford or Google because the reason it doesn't is that you wouldn't remember 173 to what? You wouldn't remember that. Can you imagine seeing a commercial saying go to, instead of Ford.com, go to 173. Dot, da, da. You, wouldn't, you wouldn't remember, right? Humans. But remember, so here's what I want you to get. You're not web browsing, you're web what? And this needs to go in your notes. You're web gathering. When you're asking for websites, okay, and that process of bringing that to you, which, by the way, seemed pretty instantaneous, didn't it? And that's because we're on a fast Internet here, really fast. And you guys aren't all using it. So I have all the bandwidth for the room allocated. I have every bit of it, okay? But here's what I want to show you. In Internet Explorer, I can go start. I'm oh, sorry, I can go to the gear. I can go to Internet Options. Browsing history. Have you heard of this term, browsing history? Yes. Yeah, but you, most people have heard of it, but they don't know what it is. So I'm going to show you what it is. I deleted. Oh, very nice. I'm going to go into it, and I'm going to say view files. So right now, how many files are on my computer? 210. That's from just the browsing I've done here because I don't ever use this browser in here. Okay? 210. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do Control A, which, by the way, what does Control A do? Uh, Selects all. all. I'm going to delete all those files. Very nice. Okay? <laughs> now, I'm going to log into Facebook. Okay? with my username and password. And it took a little longer, right? And by the way, how much information did I just gather? A whole bunch. Now, how many files do you think I've got? Uh oh, what happened? Sorry, my ear thing came off. How many files do you think just logging into Facebook, Facebook put on my local computer? I would say like 500. 500? 400 or 4? Let's see. 827. Not bad. Most people guess much lower. And it's probably because you saw the first one, you knew it. Now, why is it so much more for me logging in versus just going to their home page? You saw your files. 
It's all my feeds, right? It's all the feeds, all these feeds, all these images. Every piece here is an asset that really I could point out and find every piece that's on here in there. So here's what I want you to walk away with. Yeah, go ahead, question. It'll be whatever's in my news feed and whatever yeah, so Facebook has wrapped it up. Yeah, girl, you're on your, what is that called again? My news feed? Yeah. yeah. Um, that girl will be in here? Mm -hmm. my, it, my profile image will be in here. Anything, well, very good. Like Anything it. you see right here, yeah. videos, any of it. Facebook logo, right? If I go to properties and I look at it, it tells me, right, there's the file where it's located. But I can do this with anything. There's her profile picture. I can go and look at it. And that, so what I would look for is this image, this name, in that directory. I know, but W, w Let me show you. See that? Oh, yeah. That's, That's what you were wondering, right? Yeah. You double click on it. That's and right. Into their picture. Now, come back to me for a second. What's... The problem with this, it's actually a good thing in a sense because it allows you to ask for something, get a web page, and get all the stuff back on your local computer. But what's the challenge here? Let's say that website has got a little suspicious software or malware in it. You not only got all the stuff you wanted for a website, you also got a little malware. This is how you get infected by just browsing the web. And most people don't realize this. So you're really web what? I want you to walk away with this. Gathering. gathering. You're web gathering. Okay? You're not surfing. Because surfing would indicate, like are you, are, if you're browsing, browsing indicates you're looking at it, like through a window, and it's out there. You're bringing all that stuff to you. And therefore, it is important now, here's why your browser is important. And man, do I really want you to get this. What, what browser was I using? Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer. I can't do that with Chrome. The most I can do with Chrome is I can say about.cache. And it's going to show me, and if I wanted to count it all up, there's all the images I've used for, for being on Chrome, but it doesn't show me where they're at on my local computer. It shows me where they came from. And that's a major difference. They still go on your computer? They still go in my computer, but Google Chrome hides the location of them so that if the person wants to do something by via these files, they have to know where those are located in order to run them externally. So do you click on that, you can't go where that's you are? That's right. That's right. Very good. That was the point I was trying to get you to see. I can't click on that and show you where that's at on my local computer if I'm in which browser. Chrome. Chrome. Now, I'm not saying Chrome's the only browser. I'm just saying it's a more secure browser than Internet Explorer. And now I'm trying to explain to you why. Can you take it? Yeah, it'll actually take me right here. Like, as an example, this is um, oh, wow. actually in this case, it's actually, we could get into another discussion about what this is, but it's actually a, a GIF file. Uh, let me see if I can find a better example. Here we go. No, that's not a better example. Actually, it's actually that's actually the other security thing. That's actually the other security thing I forgot about that Chrome does. It actually doesn't show you because, by the way, do you know that uh, malware can run in images? Just opening up an image, can you can get malware. So Chrome doesn't even allow you to do that because it's securing you. That's why your browser and what you're using is important. And if you don't walk away with anything else from this lecture but that concept, you'll learn something. To switch your browser to something besides Internet Explorer. Okay? Because I can't do what I just did in Internet Explorer in any other browser. Yeah? Is it good to clear your cache? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> and here's why it's good. Because one thing is it takes up space. Okay? And if you're... God knows what I have on the screen, so let me just... <laughs> Uh, let me just switch back to my uh, thing here. Um, right here on Facebook, I mean, you never know what's going to show up. By the way, did you guys have any opinion about the Kim Kardashian photos that no. came out? 
Yeah, what was did you have? She has a nice what? Body. She has a nice butt. And a booty. Right? But did it break the internet? No. That was what it said, though. That's what the, the caption was, is that it broke the internet. What does that mean? It just means that so many people went and looked at it. Now, is it, was that actually her picture, do you think? Yes. How, how do you know that was Kim Kardashian's picture? Because you, I watch her show, I know what she looks Yo, Okay, so you watch her show. Okay, but even by watching her show... Okay. All right. I, I didn't mean to start a conversation, but do you know there's something called digital manipulation? Right? It's all over the place. If you just search... Yeah, the Nicki Minaj thing is very common. The other one, the famous one, uh, is O.J. Okay, so that's the discussion. Whether they're, I was looking for the Obama one. Like, like this. What, what do they do here? Oh, they take the back fat out. That's right. They 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 photo. This is called photoshopping. But she looks normal though. She's still beautiful. Like well, Photoshop. you mean over here? Yeah. She's well, then if she's still beautiful, why did they do that? It, yeah, it's dumb. I don't know. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Really? Probably because it sells. Maybe. Exactly. So That's exactly though. right. Yeah, she looks great. I'd love to look like her. Okay, I would too, but that's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. totally against the point. The point is that. This magazine, because they put her on the cover, when somebody just glances at that, they don't want any imperfection. And by the way, some of the celebrities are revolting against this. Yeah. They're starting to say, hey, I, I'm proud of my body, right? They did it to Benny Lovato. Right. They, I mean, we, there's case after case after case now where people are starting to get mad about it. But some people are like, thank you, right? I look so much better. But my point is that can you believe... Here's my point. Can you believe everything you see on the internet? No. Of course not. No. Do, do, do you think they photoshopped that Kim Kardashian photo? No. Yes. I do. Yes, they do. At some level, at some level, I'm telling you they did. No, they didn't. Now, now hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let, let's actually end with this. Now, to the extent that they made her booty bigger or smaller, we don't know. But they did modify the image to make it look the way they did. There's no doubt. Because every photo that catches attention like that is somehow manipulated. Most likely. 90% of the photos that you see are manipulated. And here's why. It's easy. It's easy to Photoshop stuff. Okay? Do you see how this related to the topic of websites? <laughs> what you see on the internet? Alright, so next week, last topic. My last lecture is next week and its topic is privacy and security. Okay, really important topic I saved at the end to really have you walk away with this concept. Okay, did you get something from today's lecture? A lot? What's the major thing you're going to walk away with besides Kim Kardashian's booty? Okay, hold on, December 9th, good. What? What, else? what, what do you think I want you to walk away with besides Kim Kardashian's booty? Important what you use in your browser. Very nice. It is important which browser you use because you are web what? Gathering. Gathering. Very nice. All right, let's show them. Let's wave goodbye to everyone. And now let's take off the recording. How'd you do? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hit it right there.